The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. It's a wonderful thing to be able to teach about praise because praise is one of those things that we have in our life that you can always do. You can always praise the Lord. And that's the title of this lesson, Psalms of Praise. You can praise the Lord in the good times. You can praise the Lord when it's not so good. He always gives us a chance to be able to praise Him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And that's what the psalmist tells us to do, to praise Him and to bless His name. Anybody can praise God. But when you're saved, when you're born again, when you're redeemed, when you're righteous, you're right with the Lord, you can praise Him like no other time. And you're able to just praise and worship God, to worship Him from your heart. A righteous person is the one who really worships God and praises God from the heart. We have three psalms before us today, 33, 66, and 103. Our spiritual truth is the praise of the righteous magnifies God. When you are righteous, and none of us are righteous within ourselves, but when we are declared righteous, He makes us righteous and He offers us His righteousness and we receive that. As we know in the New Testament, we receive it by faith in Jesus Christ. When He makes us righteous and He calls us into His family and we're born again, we are declared righteous. Just like Abraham in the Old Testament, God said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And he knew in the natural there's no way that could be because he didn't even have a son. But he chose to believe what God said. Against all odds and against all physical impossibilities, Abraham chose to believe God. And he looked out. God took him under the stars. And he said, look up there, Abraham. Count those stars and tell me how many they are. And it's like Abraham said, nobody can do that, Lord. This is the most beautiful night I've ever seen. Never seen so many stars in all my born days. And even in my born nights. And he looked up there and said, nobody can count those stars. And God said, that's the way your seed will be. And the scripture said he believed in the Lord. And God counted it to him for righteousness. That's the way we're declared righteous. We simply believe what God says in his word. And God declares us righteous. Our Bible focus verse. Oh, bless our God, ye people. And make the voice of his praise to be heard. That's Psalms 66 verse 8. Every one of us have a job to do this morning. It's not because the bishop told you so. It's not because the preacher told you so. It's not even because I said so. Somebody a whole lot bigger than we is the one who just told you what to do. He said, let me back this thing up and see if I make sure I read this thing right. Bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. God is saying to you to bless the Lord. He is saying to me to bless the Lord. We cannot leave it up to the preacher We cannot leave it up to the Sunday school teacher or to a deacon or to an elder to praise God for us. Nobody can praise God for you. Anybody can praise God with you. You have to praise God for yourself. Sometimes we say, please pray for me. And what we really mean is to pray along with me. Yes, we can pray with you and we can pray for you on your behalf, but nobody can pray your prayers for you. You have to pray your prayers yourself. Nobody can be saved for you. You have to do that for yourself. Isn't it a good thing to know that when you sit down at the table, you don't have to have someone to come along and eat your food for you. Then if it's good, they can put it in your mouth and let you see if it's good. Wouldn't that be a gross thing? Aren't you glad you can eat your food for yourself? Well, you can praise God for yourself. You don't have to have someone to praise God in your place. You don't have to go to church and say, I wonder who's going to speak in tongues today. I wonder who's going to prophesy today. I wonder if anybody's going to shout and praise God today. Well, let that be you, and then you won't have to worry about whether anybody else is going to do it or not. Bless our God, 
you people, and let the voice of His praise to be heard. Make the voice of His praise to be heard. That's something that you're trying to do it. Oh, we shouldn't try. Well, He said here to try. We ought to try and praise God. If we can try and say something bad, or we can try to make somebody feel bad, we can try to praise God and make someone feel good. Let the voice of His praise, and even make the voice of His praise to be heard. That's something that God wants us to do. Now, we don't praise God just to be heard. That's what we say. We don't praise Him just to be seen. But here, the verse said, let the voice and make the voice of His praise to be heard. God wants it to be heard. First of all, He wants to hear it. And I know that He hears everything. He hears us whether we breathe through our lips and say a word through our lips or not. It's amazing how people say, well, you know, preacher, I praise God in my own way. Well, it's good that you praise God in your own way. Why don't you try praising Him in His way? The gal said, well, I love my husband in my way. Why don't you try loving him in God's way? Oh, that's just our way. What about God's way? God's way is the only way that will really work. Oh, hallelujah. He said, make the voice of His praise to be heard. God wants to hear it. There's brothers and sisters around us who want to hear it, who like to hear it, who need to hear it. There's a lost and dying world who needs to hear our praise of God. If someone can sit up there and stand on television and blaspheme, and we've got to hear that, somebody needs to hear the praise of God. The first section talks about praising God for His sovereignty. His sovereignty just means that He rules over all. God is sovereign over everyone and everything. Psalms 33, 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. There again, rejoicing in the Lord, praising the Lord, you righteous. Those who are righteous, those who are right with God. You've got a right, if you're right with God, you've got a right to praise God. You've got something to rejoice about. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, for praise is comely. It's a proper thing to do for the upright. When you live the way that God wants you to live, and none of us are perfect. If we had to be perfect and we had to wait till we're perfect to praise God and serve God, nobody would ever serve God and praise God because nobody's perfect. You praise God anyhow. And He'll cause you to become more righteous. And He'll cause you to become more holy. And He'll be cause you to grow in holiness and righteousness. And your praise will continue to expand. In verse 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. Glory to God, just speaking the word. In the beginning, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Everything was void and empty. And God said, let there be light. Praise God. He just spoke the word. Let there be light. Let the dry land appear. Let the sun and the moon and the stars appear. Let the trees come forth. Let the grass come forth. Let the animals be born. And all His word just spoke it into being. The breath of His mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as a heap. God does that. He drove back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And the Israelite army went in and Pharaoh's army tried to go in after them and God drowned them in the midst of the sea. I've always liked to say that because it's not proper English. We would say drowned them, but I always like to say the old country boy way, the old homeboy way, he drowned them. He drowned them in the midst of the sea. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. God's got riches. He's got storehouses. He's got blessings galore. Blessings galore and praises in store. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. What a wonderful thing if that were to happen. And it can happen. It will happen. You and I have to take our place and make our stand. He says, let all the earth fear the Lord. 
if that were happening more and more, there'd be less and less of all this violence and hate and crime and all this going on because people would be fearing God. They'd be worshiping and serving and praising God. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. When you stand in awe of God, it's like you got your mouth open. You stand in awe of Him. For He spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. And that's the way that verse ought to be read. You don't read that verse down in the dumps. Well, He spake, it was done. He said it, and it stood fast. Oh, you got to be in a better, you got to be in a good mood like you just was going to go on your honeymoon or something. Praise God in the highest. It says, for he spake. And you say that with excitement. Not putting on a show. And if I do put on a show, let it be a praise show for Jesus. He spake and it was done. That's what he did. He spoke the world into existence. And Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 said, We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Verse 11, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. His counsel. We think that we're big stuff. We've got advice. We can do this. We can do that. But we cannot do anything without the hand of God. We cannot do anything without the counsel of the Lord. And the scripture here tells us that his counsel is the one that will stand forever. His thoughts to all generations. And He is the one who is the judge of all. He's the one who makes the decisions that this world needs to go by. And people that don't go by the things that He says, they're in a whole heap of trouble, just like all of us. When we don't do what the things that we ought to do, we're in a lot of trouble. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of His heart to all generations. Verse 14, from the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. People think that God is just up there asleep and he's not doing anything. God is watching out. He never loses an eye wink. He is up there and he's not twiddling his thumbs saying, wonder what in the world I'll do. He knows what he's going to do. From the place of his habitation... He looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. God is watching. He knows who's right and He knows who's wrong. He knows who's weak and He knows who's strong. He knows those who serve and trust in Him and He knows who does not. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. Nobody can say, well, you've got a head start up on me. You might be higher class than me. Yeah, they may be higher class, but that doesn't mean anything. All of us, we stand on even ground at the foot of the cross. He fashions their hearts alike. God made all of us with a heart, with a soul, with a spirit. And none of us can blame God because, well, you were better to Him than you were to me. You liked her more than you did me. No, God loves us all alike. And He fashions our hearts alike. On the inside, all of us are alike. Now, I know some people have a wicked heart and all that, but I'm talking about as far as being made from the Lord. All of us are made alike. And all of us have the same need. We have a need of a Savior. And we need eternal life. He considers all their works. The second section talks about praising God for answered prayer. And all of us have prayers that have been answered. Psalms 66 and Psalms 100, they open in about the same way. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of His name. Make His praise glorious. In Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Praise God. We have so much to rejoice about. God has given us an opportunity to praise Him and to worship Him. And He has given us this opportunity to bless His holy name. And we have the opportunity right now to praise God and to bless Him. God says that 
We can sing forth the honor of his name. We can serve the Lord with gladness. Make a joyful noise unto God. All the earth sing forth the honor of his name. We have something to sing about. We have something to shout about. We have something to rejoice about. Because God is the one that we serve. Say unto God, how terrible. And that means awesome. Terrible doesn't mean terrible like, ooh, that's bad. The word, old King James word, how terrible, how awesome art thou in thy works. God is an awesome God. He does mighty and wonderful things. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. God's power is able to bring the enemy into subjection. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. There it is again. I was talking earlier about let all the earth fear the Lord. All the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. And here it says... All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. Oh, if that might be, we could say, well, it will be. Jesus comes again and the devil's bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And our Lord Jesus Christ will rule and reign on this world. Then all the world will worship him and sing to him. They shall sing to thy name. Selah means think about that. That's what we've been doing. We've been chawing on that for a few minutes. Because God wants us to think about it. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible. They're again awesome. In His doing toward the children of men. God is a faithful God. He gets up every morning. He never goes to sleep. But just in our way of thinking, He gets up every morning with blessings in store galore for you and I. And He's faithful to us. He's faithful in His works. That means His dealings toward the children of men. Verse 8, O bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of His praise to be heard. There's our Bible focus verse again. Blessing God, making the voice of His praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. He holds our soul in life. What is your soul? It's your life. It's your heart. Your soul with the heart man believes to righteousness. He holds our soul in life. When God created you, and it's so important, brothers and sisters, to believe that life begins at conception. Because when God created you, when you are conceived, your life started at that moment. Your spirit was born, even though your body was not developed. Your spirit was born at that moment. And you became a living being at that time. Just like when God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living soul. When you were conceived, you became a living being. And he fashions our heart alike. And he holds our soul in life. You were given a soul. A living soul at that moment that will never die. Bodies die and return back to dust. But your spirit, your soul will never die. When you die, your spirit returns to God who gave it. And your soul goes either to heaven or hell. There's no purgatory. There's no in-between place. When you die, that's it. Every how you lay down is how you're going to get up. He holds our soul in life and suffers not our feet to be moved. Verse 20. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. God is faithful. We could pray and he could say, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to put up with you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I'm too busy for you this morning. But God is never too busy for one of his children. When we pray, He's always there to hear us. He has not turned away our prayer, nor His mercy from us. We talked about the mercy of God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His mercy endures forever. And then the last section talks about praising God for His words. His word. He sent His word and healed them, the Scripture says. His word is so important because the word gives us a basis on which to stand, not only to believe, but it gives us a basis on which to stand to praise God. How do I know that I can praise God? What gives me a right to praise God? Well, He tells me in His word to praise Him. And there's so many reasons for me to praise God. 
Bless the Lord. This is Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. We have a right to praise Him. Our soul praises Him. All that's within us can praise Him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. These are some benefits that God gives to you and I, those who are born again, those who know the Lord, and He gives us benefits, all kind of benefits, and there's about five of them that are mentioned here. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if that's not a reason to praise God and give glory to Him, I don't know what is. Hallelujah. We have benefits that God has given to us. We don't have just a dry, dead religion. You praise Him just because. No, it's not just because. We have a lot of reasons to praise God. Who forgives all your iniquities? Now, don't you know that your sins are forgiven? Don't you know that your iniquities have been forgiven? Well, the same God who forgives all your iniquities can heal all your diseases. He's a God that can heal us. And He redeems our life from destruction. Even when this body lies down in the dust, we know that that's not the end for the child of God. He has redeemed our life from destruction. He has saved us and taken us off the path that we were going on to destruction. Wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that goes to life, and few there be that find it. But thank God we're among those chosen few who have found the way to life. He's redeemed our life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness. That's that Old Testament word. You don't find that in the New Testament. That's one reason to like the Old Testament. Because loving kindness is in there. And even though it's in the New Testament, you don't see the word. But it's loving kindness. He satisfies us. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things. Next time you chow down on that chicken leg or barbecue or steak, you say, He's satisfying my mouth with good things. My youth is being renewed like the eagles. He might not turn back the clock, but in Jesus you can be 25 again. Praise God in the highest for that. I'll tell you what, and in verse 22, Bless the Lord all His works in all places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise God for the opportunity to serve God and to worship Him, to know that we can bless Him, that we have a reason to praise God. We have many reasons to praise and to worship God. Father, I thank You for this day. Thank You for the opportunity to worship You and to praise You and to bless Your name at all times. Lord, I praise You today that we have so many reasons and we have so many things for which to be thankful for. And I pray today that You would help us to be grateful and help us to give glory to your name because you are high and lifted up in all the earth. That's who you are. We praise and bless your name. Touch your people today. Encourage our hearts to praise and worship God. Let us make the voice of your praise to be heard. In Jesus' name, amen. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 